Welcome to Love You a Brunch, the podcast for foodies and those who'd rather be brunching. Hi, I'm Jody Stapler. We are speaking with Colleen Kennedy today. Uh, she is the creator of the popular food blog Souffle Bombay and the author of a new kids' cookbook, Kid Chef Every Day, the easy cookbook for foodie kids. So welcome, Colleen. How are you? I'm wonderful, Jody. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, tell us a little bit about um, yourself, first of all, so we can get to know you. Um, sure. I used to be in corporate America, um, but I found ways to weave in my love of cooking while I was there. I was a sales manager that ran a large banking uh, territory, so I would often build in prizes where I would go and you know cook for the team that won. So my love of cooking started um, as a child, I would think, uh, cooking with my mom, my grandmothers, my great grandmothers. Um, and when Santa Claus bought me or brought me a cookbook for Christmas when I was about eight years old, um, the next day I just ran to the kitchen and I had to cook something up. And ever since then, I've been smitten. And I think what, what really got me was the way I felt when I made something for others and I saw their reaction, I made people happy through food. So yeah. I just kind of wanted that experience again and again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I remember that experience myself getting a cookbook. I was always in the kitchen. So I, it is very exciting as a kid to, first of all, be allowed to be in the kitchen doing something. And secondly, to create something that actually people like. So yeah, I totally get that. Yep. And, and, you know, I think kids get um, just so puffed up with pride when they contribute to their family yeah. um, and they just see people's reactions. So that's something that was important to me to, you know, model to my children and have them emulate at a young age. Absolutely. So how did you end up from corporate America <laughs> to food blogger? Well, it's kind of crazy. So um, I was one of those little corporate America darlings, you know, got all the bonus checks, went on all the trips, and my job was eliminated. The same position was eliminated multi-statewide. So I think I was literally a medical shock when that happened. Yeah. Um, about 48 hours later, if that, I just sat up in the middle of the night with an idea. I ran with it, and I ended up on QVC with a cookbook for kids wow. that was a little bit different. So from there, I said, well, geez, I guess I need a website for this. <laughs> so I kind of backed into it got into the, you know, a website sharing recipes and silly stories. I thought, Hey, if my kids, you know, if I get hit by a bus, my kids have a little piece of me on the internet. And, uh, I had no idea blogging could turn into more. Right. So I, I, I kind of got away from kids cooking in the website. I mean, it's, it's mingled in there, of course, all the time, because I do cook with my kids always. Um, and then, you know, I've been doing that for about eight years and, um, this next opportunity for a cookbook with a publisher came knocking. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and where did you come up with the name Souffle Bombay? <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> so I, I know I needed a website. I sit down and I have a family meeting with my children and my husband after having, of course, already researched the names and had the idea for what name I would call it and seeing what was available. And my then five-year-old daughter says, call it souffle Bombay. And five times I'm saying, what are you saying? What is that? <laughs> so I was like, oh my gosh, that's kind of cute. Yeah. Now, in hindsight, if I could have called it something different, it might have got me further quicker um, because souffle Bombay doesn't mean anything. Right. Um, and funny, funny enough, 18 months later, I'm sitting on the couch watching one of her favorite cartoons, um, Maggie and the Ferocious Beast. Yeah. And there is a pig who is a chef who was making a souffle Bombay. Yeah. So back oh. when my daughter, yeah, so back when my daughter had said this name, I'm like, um, how do you even know what a souffle is, Samantha, right. at five? And she said, mommy, a souffle Bombay is a giant pumpkin carved out, filled with oatmeal. Oh and my I'm like, gosh. okay, and darn it, if that wasn't what the pig was making on TV that day, climbing oh, up the ladder funny. into it. Yeah, it was I, great. How old is your daughter now? She just turned 14. Okay, I was going to say, I remember my sons watching that show, and I have a 14-year-old. So, yeah, I, I, I can actually <laughs> picture that. I, I, don't, I don't specifically remember that show, but I can picture the pig and Maggie and the ferocious beast and all yeah. of that. Yeah. That's Isn't awesome. that funny? <laughs> That's awesome. The things that kids pick up and stick with, um, I just love it. I love it. So that's awesome. So how does she feel about her name being – part of this and her story being part of your blog and everything. Uh, I think she thinks it's cool, but the joke in my family is that I have three of the best hand models around. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> when I need things, I'm always like, Hey, hold this. Can I use your hand? Stand like this, do this. Oh, that's so funny. 
Yeah. Yeah. I let them ask their opinions about things. And sometimes my daughter, especially, she's the one who really likes to cook. Um, she'll give me ideas and say, Hey, what if, what if you did this? And I'll tell you if that kid doesn't have a palate better than I do. Wow. Um, so I, I ask her opinions on things. And the crazy thing is with how video has morphed these days into every branch of social media possible, yeah. I'll ask her opinion on video techniques and things because she, that's how these kids learn. Oh, completely. They don't even need to go to school anymore. They could just watch YouTube all day. Yeah. I swear. Yeah. They learn better that way. Yeah. So, yep. Yep. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, the book that you just, its it just came out, right? Actually, today, t- it was on pre-sale, and today it launches uh, officially on sale. Okay. It's done very well, actually. I guess it was a good time of year to come out as well, because uh, I, I think many people probably, you always like to get your kids books for Christmas, and cookbooks are a good idea as Definitely. well. I've always tried to do that. Um, it, it, the thought behind this book was, this is a book for kids that already have dabbled into the kitchen and want to get to the next level. So there's no cutesy, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, caterpillar, this, whatever in this book. It's real food that families could enjoy every day. So it's things that you want, you know, to cook and eat and, and, and have as a part of your breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert on normal days. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm, I actually have the Kindle version and that's been available for, I think about a week now. Um, or, yes. And, it is great. It it's the first part of the book are basic, you know, rules and and telling, you know, you know, make make sure you wash the produce, um, be safe with the knives and things like that, and telling about different kinds of dishes and baking casseroles. So it really is helping the kids learn exactly what they need to do and what they you know they can use. And I I find that I have a nine year old. And um, I find that if I try to tell her these things on my own, that she gets very, I'll just say independent. Sure. Uh, yeah. She wants to do it on her own. She doesn't want my help. And so this is nice with your book that it has all of this laid out and she doesn't feel like I'm mom's telling me what to do. So. Right. And I think that's what parents need to do. I, I always say, get your kids into the kitchen early and often. Yeah. So I don't know if, if early to you means two years old or 12 years old, just do it. Right. Yeah. When, when, when you're 25 years old, you can't change how tall you are. Right. <laughs> you can't change the color of your eyes or can you these days. Um, but you could change the fact for the people that walk around and proudly say, I can't cook. You, you can change it. If you can read, you can cook. And even younger than reading, if these kids assist in the kitchen, they're going to at least taste what they make, right? Absolutely. And that's a battle that every parent has. So even even myself, when I cook things that I've never even put into my mouth before, I'm like, oh, this is pretty good, you know, like, because you did it yourself. So definitely getting the kids involved in any way. And sure, we as parents are like, I don't want the mess, or they're going to slow me down. They, they surprise you over and over again. You, you teach them the foundation, and then you let them go. I know my daughter and my niece are the same age, just, just 14. And um, for probably four or five years now, now they've been asking, can we do like a master chef challenge? <laughs> so sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, cause I have yeah. to, cause I know what the kitchen, they will use every pot and pan available to them. They want to compete with each other and darn if they don't decorate the plates and really think things out and surprise the heck out of us every single time with their little ideas. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And these are the memories. These are the things that you're going to take to to you in the future. So you'll get that smell when you're 37 years old that will bring you back to the kitchen with your mom or your brother or your grandmother or that taste. So to me, I think food memories are some of the strongest and best memories. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, I, I have to tell you that uh, you've with the uh, Food Network challenges type of things, uh, we've played Chopped here at the house uh-huh. with the kids, uh, but we do it a little different because I don't want four things of all. So I have them each do a, a portion of the meal, but they have to figure out what they're doing with just things I stick in the basket. They I love that stuff. That's fantastic. They, they love to be able to be in there and doing something and feel like that they're doing something important for the family. Yeah. We all eat it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I just think it's just such a great gift to give the kids. And you know, it's funny when my daughter, especially it's the girls that come to your house and hang out and play that make you a little bit crazy in kindergarten, first grade with how loud and and, and all over they are back then I would say, okay, girls, who wants to make cookies? (laughs) And it became a ritual, right? Because these kids are so ritualistic. Every single time these girls came to the house, 
what did they want to do? They wanted to cook something. So yeah, believe me, I didn't want to do that all the time either. But how many kids would even second, third grade say, oh, I never made cookies before. I'm like, what? <laughs> What do you mean yeah. you haven't made cookies before? Or, you know, just the fundamentals. They they love it. They 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 have a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I I'm loving that you actually show in the book how to cut things, um, how to do the prep, and everything like that. So it it is something that they can go through, and if they're old enough, really take this on themselves, which is great. Yeah. And again, kids will surprise you. Um, my daughter has had her own petite chef's knife since she was seven. I thought mm. it, it fits her hand. She still loves to use it to this day. Um, I'm standing right there with her. I'm telling her the foundation. She's going to be fine. Do you know what I mean? So start yeah. them off with a butter knife, move up to the next thing. Um, as long as you're, people are afraid, oh, the knives are sharp. They're going to get hurt. Nope. A sharp knife is safer than a dull knife for the kids. Yeah. So just, you know, I, I think it surprises people with their own, even with their own kids. And, you know, I'm a Girl Scout leader. So I take my, I have a junior troop, first year juniors and, you know, 16 girls, I take them camping and I require them to plan the meals. They have to help cook the meals. And I stand there and watch them just make sure that they're not hurting themselves or doing anything that they shouldn't be. Um, but they love it. And what and did the they funny learn? the thing is, right? What yeah. did they learn in the process? They planned it. They followed exactly. through. They had time management, organization skills, math, science, you know, the chemistry of food coming to life in front of them. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And the funny thing is afterwards, when it's time to clean up, I have them asking, can I do the dishes? Can I, can I clean this up? And when their parents will come with us camping every so often, they are shocked that their kids want to do this. And I'm like, this is how it is every time. Send those girls they get my way. so involved. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> well, you know, I think it's something special that they get to do it and that they're in charge. And, and I think so oftentimes at home, we're like, no, 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 you just go, I'll, I'll clean this up, go, you know, get out of my way type of thing. And, uh, I think if we let them do it a little, little bit more, maybe oh, you know, right. make our all lives easier. And you know what, even the mishaps in the kitchen, when a child in all earnest gives you this meal, they lovingly prepared and you're looking at it like, I, I'm not eating this, but you do, you'll be yeah. laughing about it years later. So, I mean, yeah. that's just some um, amazing, like I can remember being a kid making a menu for my parents' anniversary and, you know, having like dishes for them to choose from, playing music for them to dance, making yeah. a restaurant, you know what I mean? Like, so I look back and I know they look back on that stuff as well. So it's just great memories. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, that just reminded me, my sister and I used to do that. We'd turn the attic into our restaurant. My name was Jody. Her name is Jamie. And we'd call ourselves Jade. Oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> we had a little restaurant and we do the same thing. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> I haven't thought about that in years. See, yeah, so this is definitely something that I'm right up a, I'm a foodie, especially for a foodie kid's alley. And these recipes aren't, like you said, peanut butter and jelly recipes. Like, give us give us a couple recipes that, what does your daughter like to cook out of this? Oh, probably her favorite, uh, well, her favorite thing to, is not in the book, chicken franchise. She's been making that since she was young. There's a little too many wow. ingredients, I think, to put into the book. But tortellini, yeah. spinach soup, she would make that every day if she could. And the whole that's one meal the whole family can agree on. Um, yeah. Lemon um, chicken is in there, lemon pork chops. Uh, a nice baked garlic parmesan uh, wing recipe that I think anybody in the family would enjoy. Why buy store-bought jam when you can easily make it at home? And I have an, an easy one in there that doesn't require canning, that doesn't require pectin, um, and it tastes just as good or better than what you're going to get at the store. Pizza butt bites are a favorite of the kids. Um, they. I was just going to yeah. say that. My, my daughter's always begging to buy pizza bites at the store, and I think this is going to be the first one I have her make on her own to show her that – First of all, she can make it healthier than yes. the processed stuff at the store. Absolutely. And that's that's another part of it. Yeah, that's another thing that cooking teaches you. And besides empowering you, I mean, imagine just sitting somewhere in your house going, I'm hungry for this, and walking into the kitchen and being able to bring it to life. Or no, you're going to yeah, go to the I, store and do it. But, you know, to... Right. It is so hard for for teenagers, especially nowadays, when they think they can just run to a store and grab something at the local, like, um, convenient mart. Uh, that pre-made food that they're making. And so sometimes, you know, my 19-year-old will walk in the kitchen with a full house of food and be like, there's nothing to eat because it's not already made. And they, he just doesn't even think to put the ingredients together to do That's, it. That is, and, and you're right about that because I see the different camps of kids that are like that. 
Um, my son and his friends, I, I'm like a little, I have these groupies <laughs> of the 16 <laughs> and 14 year olds said, especially the 16 year olds. They watch my every move, especially on Instagram. And they're like, Mrs. Yeah. Kennedy, you made, how did you make, and what did you, I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, you're all watching me. This is so weird. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. but the kids are really interested. Like the 16 year olds are going, where can I get your book? When can I get your book? And I'm like, uh, okay, hold on a second. So, you know, it's just, I love it's, it. yeah. So they are interested. I think kids just need to be given the power. Yeah. And I will tell you my daughter, when I think, I don't know if she was seven or eight, we host Thanksgiving every year. And, um, mainly because she wants it here because she just loves the, the melee of it all. She just loves me, the, <laughs> the frenzy of the kitchen. But when she was, I yeah. think seven, I was not going to make it. I was so in the weeds, as they say in the kitchen. And she surprised me. She, she fully took care of a couple of the dishes. And I was just like, I can't, I can't believe she just did that. Like I had yeah, no right? idea she could, you know, so, um, like I said, kids will surprise you and let them go, let them make their messes. But, you know, again, I think the very first thing I ever taught my kids was the mise en place, you know, that French saying, like, put everything in yeah. its place, get everything out that you need. And as soon as you're finished with it, put it away. Because sure, you're right. going to make a mess, but at least that stuff's out of the way and your mess isn't a bigger mess. So be right. safe in the kitchen. And funny enough, my son, in freshman year in um, high school, took like cooking class. And I'm like, why did you take a cooking class? You already know yeah. all this stuff. But again, right. kids enjoy it. They have fun. So he yeah. just wants to look like a little rock star. Yeah, I kind of wish that I had done a little bit more with my oldest, my 19-year-old, because my 17-year-old, he he is much more of a cook. And he, you know, I get maybe it's just the personality of the kids. But um, they will, my other kids will actually go to him to say, you know, will you make me something? Whereas, like I said, my 19 year old will walk around going, I can't find exactly. anything to eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I, I just so. charged my 16 year old. Um, I said, hey, listen, you're responsible for one meal a week, you know, because where she yeah. wants it, wants it, wants it, even if I don't want her, she's here. Um, but, but I do. I love the when kids cook with you, especially those um, tweens and teens. They don't yeah. stop talking. So these parents that right. say, my kids don't talk to me. Oh my gosh, just put them in a the kitchen. You'll be so surprised. They'll just start chattering. But yeah, so yeah. one, I, and literally before I spoke to you today, somebody was saying they didn't know what to get their child for Christmas. And I said, hey, one of the she get of the country she's visited, tapas, what does she like? Get one of those cookbooks and charge her with one on one dessert a week. Just make it so. And then they get into the yeah. habit of it. And by the time they go to college, they won't be eating out of the cap all the time. They'll be whipping things up in their in their dorm. Definitely. I, you know, I do think that is going to be on my New Year's resolutions this year. Um, I'm going to start doing that with my kids. I did it when they, the older ones were a little bit younger, third and fourth grade, um, and they would help out. Of course, like I said, my oldest one didn't really want to help as much. Um, but maybe maybe that, you know, make take a load off me and give them something that's fun to do. Right. And you don't need to hover. Just let them, let them go. They have the directions for wherever they're getting it from. Let me tell you, just put a tablet in front of them. They'll be watching something on YouTube or, or right. Instagram, IGTV or something. Um, and let them go. If they need you, they'll call out on you or they'll call an older sibling, but you'd be, yeah. you'll probably be pleasantly surprised. Now, do you feel like any of your recipes in this book, um, they would, anything that would they need help with, or they need to get special equipment for, or is this all basic? Like you can do it they can, you think they can do it on their own? Yeah. Just about every recipe in this book is eight ingredients or less. Um, nice. so, and like I said, but it's real food. So, um, of course there's, it's not like leaning towards healthy, but it's not unhealthy either. So it's just like food that families truly eat and enjoy. So if a child is not used to working with the oven, then maybe someone's just nearby if they need help taking it out or something like that. Or if they're not used to sauteing something, again, someone's there if they're afraid what a little splatter does to teach them how to turn the heat down. Because no matter what you write in a book or show on a video, um, everyone's stove is different and everyone, you tell them what to measure. It's, it's just going to come out differently with the pans you use, how much oil is in there, the heat that you're using. So you never know like something like that that could happen. So just to let them know you're nearby if they need help and just lay the ground rules. I think they'll be fine. Right. And there's some great cookie recipes in here, mm -hmm. um, a cheesecake recipe. So these are going to be perfect over this Christmas vacation. Oh yeah. If everybody wants to try a breakfast pizza, that's my kids like number one request, like their favorite thing for breakfast. So yeah. it could be anything. And do you have to make the dough? No, go to your local pizza joint for two fifty and get a disc of dough made better than you could ever make it. You know what I mean? Because this is what they do yeah. all day, every day. 
and then get your asparagus, get your eggs, get your meats, whatever you want to put on it and cheeses. Oh, it's life altering. Something about an egg yolk on a pizza crust is magical. And my whole family agrees. Right. Yep. That, you know what, that only, I guess it's what, it's been like five or six years where that really became a thing, putting the eggs on, but the difference it makes on food Absolutely. is amazing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Oh, I can see. I just found another one. She's going to love <laughs> garlic shrimp. Oh, yeah. And that's super easy. And again, that people would be wild uh, if a child made that. But it's so yeah. easy. Actually, a food blogger um, saw that recipe and did it on uh, like a Facebook Live to see if she could do it quickly. And I think she had it done in like 14 minutes or something like that. So, yeah. She, oh, I love yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. What would be – what do you think should I ha- should have her be her first – recipe or first meal out of here to, to make. And this is the 14 year old. No, this is a nine year old. Oh, the nine year old. Is she a picky eater? Yeah. She is not. Um, not really. No. Okay. No, she's, she's a foodie. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really, if she likes pork, I really enjoy the Cuban, the mojo pork. And I think that's kind of easy to, to start to make and, and to cook. You could do it on the grill. You could do it in the oven. Um, or the chicken Italiano in the book is just nice. It's just a chicken cutlet, some mozzarella cheese, a roasted red pepper, and some sauce. And it's a pretty, like, stack that comes out. She could actually make a plate for everyone instead of it as a whole. Or l- lasagna might be hard for a, the dexterity of a nine-year-old to make, but in the book is a simple ravioli lasagna. So you don't have the work okay. of the noodles. Yeah. So something like that she could probably feel really proud and excited about. Right. She wants to add some spinach in. Whatever she wants to do, she can she can make it her own. Yeah. Yes. Uh, she is going to love this. Um, she, she's the only girl out of four kids and she's the youngest and she's always the one that's trying to get everybody to do stuff together because the boys are getting older. They don't really want to do it anymore. And so she's going to love this. I'm going to give her the whole night. She can plan it all on her own and, and yeah, she's going to just have a ball. That's fantastic. And then she can organize in the future, each kid making a segment right. of dinner. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you have your progressive dinner at, at the table. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Definitely. Um, where can they find this book and where can they find you? Oh, um, the book is available on Amazon. It's also available online in Target and Barnes and Noble. I'm waiting to hear if it's being physically carried in Barnes and Noble and Costco and places like that. The holidays, I think, have... Um, there's so much inventory in those places right now that we'll probably hear that in January. Yeah. Um, and I, my website is Souffle Bombay. I'm everywhere, uh, listed that way on Facebook, Instagram, um, at Pinterest, YouTube, you name it. (laughs) It's all Souffle Bombay across the board. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I love that, that your daughter came up with that name. (laughs) I know I do too. (laughs) Okay, very good. Is there anywhere that uh, are you going to be doing any book signings or anything like that? Um, I'm waiting to hear about that. So we'll see. I mean, the book has done very, very well in pre-sale. Um, they were actually pleasantly surprised. You you get a goal yeah. for where they want you. Um, they said they would be happy if I was in the 20,000s rank. I guess on Amazon, there's over a million books, right? Right. So they said, okay, the goal is to stay in the 20s. I think this morning I was in the 1300s. Oh, so yeah. Cool. So yeah. if I, if I could get up in the top 1000 books, that would be amazing. So we'll see what happens. Very good. But, but it's, it's number one. It's, it's been number one since it came out for kids, um, home. Oh, great. Books. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think, I think today I saw it number one in the cookbooks too. Oh, awesome. So, which was pretty cool. Awesome. Well, I will definitely let you know when my daughter's going to make a recipe on the YouTube channel because Fantastic. she loves doing that kind of thing. And, um, trying out some of the recipes from your book will be awesome. Oh, well, good luck to her. And I hope you enjoy what she makes. Yes. Uh, Thank you so much for joining me today. And um, is there anything else you'd like to tell anybody? No, not at all. I just hope everybody has a great holiday season and um, get your kids in the kitchen. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. It's such a great cookbook. Kid Chef Every Day, the easy cookbook for foodie kids. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you. I want to thank Colleen Kennedy for joining me today and speaking about her book, Kid Chef Every Day, the easy cookbook for foodie kids. I can't wait to try some of the recipes after my kids make them from the book. Also, I want to thank you for joining us on Love You a Brunch and for joining us every week. Make sure you subscribe to us on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you listen to podcasts. 
That's how others find us. Also, please leave a review or a comment. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, or on our website, loveyourbrunchpodcast.com. You can find me at jodystapler.com. Again, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next week on Love You A Brunch.